Hey guys, it's Carl, welcome back to another one. And this is the six month period of the iPhone 13, 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max, which is the one that I'm using. We're right between a refresh or upgrade cycle and it's usually my revisited review. Is it worth waiting out or sticking with the current gen or should you wait another six months for the iPhone 14 slash 14 Pro line? So as a little heads up, like I mentioned, the 13 Pro Max, I use this solely for the battery. It's the largest one and it lasts the longest. The thing that I've noticed the most with any iPhone, not just the 13 line. Around that six month mark, the battery life starts to kind of decline. And uh, since I am on the device a ton, my actual screen on time, I think is around seven-ish hours a day. Five and a half hours, if we quickly check through, Instagram takes the longest time around four hours, but say when I was at CES at the beginning of January, uh, yeah, easily on this for at least seven hours a day. And that's the sole reason why I'm kind of on this device. I'm used to the size, I'm used to the form factor, and usually my recommended phone for most people, it's just the standard iPhone 13, unless social media is your job. If you're on it for uh, you know hours a day, if you're not just doing the deathly scroll through, wasting a lot of your time, um, if you do, that's okay, because I feel like that is my life lately. Uh, yeah, you want to get the larger Pro Max model. And in terms of overall performance, this still kind of performs like it does, like I got it on day one. So the A15 Bionic is an absolute powerhouse. It's obviously the fastest chip that Apple currently makes. And I'm sure when we get the iPhone 14, the A16 Bionic will be introduced. It'll only be marginally better. Performance on phones or devices has kind of been consistent over the past five to six years. They're just small little increments. And unless you're running a device uh, like the iPhone 13, comparing it against say an iPhone 6, six or seven, that's when you'll notice the biggest difference in, uh, I guess, speed or overall performance. So yeah, multitasking, going through my four hours of Instagram a day, um, switching between social media apps, playing every single game that the app store can throw at me, listening to music, editing every single photo that you guys see on Instagram through Lightroom. All of that is done on a mobile device. All of that is done on this very phone. So I am on it a ton. And typically for refresh cycles, this is usually my advice for people that are kind of halfway through. If you you need the phone or if you think you can be productive with a device for say the next six months if this is a business purchase if you are going to use it to create content if you want to shoot better video I can justify spending or upgrading six months down the road because in that time, in that six month period between now, end of January till um, I guess September, think of all that content or anything that you can create in that time period. Maybe that's an incentive in its own to upgrade, but uh, if you are getting by with your current device, I'm always curious to see the next gen model. And because we've had this style of iPhone, this, design. So it's got the squarish design that we've seen. We've got the triple camera setup. If I actually show some B-roll footage of my iPhone 13, you kind of won't really notice the difference. Obviously the camera module is slightly bigger, which we'll get to in a second, but uh, we should see a new upgrade or a new design change coming to the iPhone 14. If we look at the current rumor mill, we should have a display with an even smaller notch. I know that they reduced the notch size over on the 13 line. Once again, isn't too big of a deal breaker because Apple doesn't really utilize any of this extra free space that we've reclaimed. You still have the time on your left and of course all the SIM and connection info and battery life on the left. And other than that, the notch, it's still kind of lives there, it still has face ID. So some of the rumors, or I guess some of the renders have shown an even smaller notch, maybe just a little hole punch cutout. Obviously we've seen that on Android phones now for the past half decade. So uh, I'm sure when Apple introduces that or it does come, we'll see this is the best way to create a notch. And maybe after that, every other phone will kind of follow in its footsteps. One thing that the Pro model has is ProMotion. So that's 120 Hertz refresh rate over on the display and expect that to kind of trickle down into the standard iPhone 14 line. I would say that's kind of a deal breaker. Once you have that 120 Hertz, when you go back to an older, or I guess 60 Hertz slower panel, you definitely notice it's not really a speed decrease, but there is a bit of extra stutter. I guess that extra refresh rate does help your mind uh, make it seem like it's a quicker phone. So that's possibly a potential reason to wait for the standard 14. But if you're ready, say on the 13 Pro, you won't really notice those benefits. And I don't see Apple switching to a 240 Hertz panel. Um, that would just be ridiculous. 
In terms of the overall rest of the design, there isn't really too much to change in a phone, as long as we're kind of stuck to this form factor of having, you know, all glass around, having the display on the front. I know that Apple does have a folding phone currently in the works. I know that they have a couple patents and designs locked up, but I still think folding phones need a bit of work and Apple is usually late to the game with tech. They kind of introduce it maybe a couple years down the road and say, this is the best implementation or we can do this the best. And uh, I would say, to expect a folding phone from Apple probably in that two to three year mark is my guess anyways. For the rest of the design, you're still gonna get that same glass on the back. I will say Apple smashed it out of the park with Sierra Blue this year and typically colors get refreshed every single cycle. So don't expect to see Sierra Blue, but still expect to see their standard white slash stainless steel. Of course, their space gray slash black. We'll still get some sort of champagne slash gold. And for the 14 Pro line, I guess they're hero color, I'm still waiting on that elusive orange. So if you are a fan of the Sierra Blue, I will say it is a stunning color. I know that most people don't rock their phones without a case, but if you do, um, if color is a reason to sway you in that option, you know which one to get right now. One big thing though that might sway you in the direction of the iPhone 13 is that potential price bump that I think has been going around a lot. So inflation has kind of just been going through the roof lately and everything costs more money now than it did a year or two years ago. And iPhones have been pretty good in keeping the same kind of value, the same pricing structure, but it's reported that the next gen iPhone will cost a hundred dollars more. And especially if you're in places like here in Canada, other parts of the world, that will probably increase 150 to $200 depending on your exchange. So right now you can grab the iPhone 13 Pro Max for 1100 or 1099. Expect to see that bumped up to at least 1200 USD. The standard iPhone 14 on the other hand will be around the 8 100-ish dollar mark if we see that price bump. And if you look at anything like I've mentioned, uh, the price of milk, the price of gas, um, it's so expensive to fill up a car now. And uh, talking about cars, I'm eyeing a new 911. So my GTS, which I bought in 2018, that was retailing for 135,000 Canadian. That exact model now is 150,000. So 15,000 price bump or a $15,000 increase for essentially the same car. And you can expect to see that price bump for pretty much every good, every electronic that you buy uh, kind of going forward. And that's just, I guess, economics. That's a discussion for another video. But uh, if you wanna get the best bang for your buck, they could potentially decrease the price of the current 13. But if anything, I could see them keeping this the same and the newer iPhone 14, 14 Pro line will just be more expensive. So. Honestly, if you wanna save a couple hundred bucks, depending on where you are, you wanna have it a bit earlier, it's a good time to upgrade or it's a good time to still buy right now, six months beforehand. I know I mentioned that this video is mostly around the 13 Pro Max is my daily, but another reason to stick to the 13 line, especially if you are a 13 mini user, it's reported that this will be the last mini model that we are gonna get. So if you're a fan of a smaller phone, if you like the small form factor of the 13 mini, snag it now because uh, there will not be an iPhone 14 mini. And I guess this will just be the last of its kind. And I know that there's a bit of a cult following for the 13 minis. The next thing that most people use their phone for is the camera. So we are expected to get a new camera module for the 14 line. And if you've been following iPhones for the past couple of years, you probably look at the spec sheet and say, yeah, they have very similar numbers. We still see a 12 megapixel sensor. They've slightly redesigned some of the lenses, of course, some of the glass, but it has the same megapixel count. And the 14 line is reportedly we'll see how true this is, gonna come with a 48 megapixel sensor. So if you use your phone a ton for video, for photography, I'd say it's a toss up between the Pixel 6 Pro and the iPhone. I will give the slight bump up in photos for the Pixel. You've got a couple of cool features like Magic Eraser, like Motion Blur, and that's all of course with Google's algorithms and their computational photography. For video, I will still say the iPhone reigns supreme. And of course, for any social media content, if you're big on Instagram, you're big on Snapchat, even say TikTok, which I'm still trying to break into, the iPhone is the best, hands down. I will give huge props to Google over onto Android for making it better, but uh, stuff on social media just looks the best on an iPhone and there's just no way around that. 
And yeah, other than that, uh, if any of those points really hit home about the next gen iPhone, the iPhone 14, if you are keen on waiting six months, but I am always that person, if you can make it worthwhile to use a device for that six month period, if you're gonna make some killer content, if you will increase the quality of your life, can a phone do that? I think only you can answer that. <laughs> Worst case scenario, you can always grab one now, sell it down the road, maybe five and a half months out uh, before the iPhone 14 comes, you'll still get some awesome value. iPhones really hold their value well on Kijiji, Craigslist, eBay, whatever you end up using to sell it. But um, yeah, hopefully this kind of answered your question. I am looking forward to that new design change. Expect the iPhone 14 not to be a, a gimmick or an S model. It's something that I'm obviously looking really forward to and I do usually get them hands on a bit early. So if you already haven't, here's my shameless plug for the day. Sub to the channel. If you like this vid, smash the like button. You can't dislike it anymore. Luckily, um, yeah, I'll catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Peace. And P.S. If you are still watching this vid, the only thing that I've done to this iPhone is grab a screen protector on it. I usually rock a D-brand screen protector just to protect it from some scratches. And yes, I do rock it naked without any cases. The stainless steel has held up pretty well. There are some uh, little beauty marks because I have dropped the phone, but um, yeah, overall I live on the edge and it's mostly because uh, I'm lucky enough to upgrade every single year. That's it.